Those that understand that there is a major shift out of paper assets into real assets inevitably start with the gut reaction of buying gold. In short, gold is the gut reaction because people do not have the real understanding of why they are buying gold. Sure, they get that it's rare. They might remember their grandfather saying to buy gold, but they have not gone through the educational process to truly grasp what they are doing. When I got out of paper assets, the first thing I bought was gold. It was a gut reaction. The more that I learn about silver, the more I realize that silver was the smart decision. When I started my awakening process, I studied credit cycles and finally understood that the Federal Reserve was a privately and foreign owned bank. I wanted to get my wealth out of their casino. Now that people are starting to wake up to this reality, they want out also. The first thing that they usually do is buy gold. Gold is the largest precious metal market in the world and it has the most advertising behind it. People have seen it in movies as pirate treasure and may have heard that it was confiscated many years ago. I also believe that gold is very impressive to hold and feel and it's hard not to make it your first purchase. In short, gold is the gut reaction for most paper investors who want out of the casino. The more I learned about silver, the more I saw that it was the only investment for me and my family. I am more bullish now in 2012 than I was when I bet the house on silver in 2005. When you truly understand the fundamentals behind silver, you will see that it's simply the best investment out there. And I challenge anyone to find me a better investment. First and foremost, the reason why I invested in physical silver is because it is a physical, tangible asset. When I say invest in silver, I do not mean anything else but the real stuff in your hand. If you don't hold it, you don't own it. Stay away from SLV, unallocated bullion accounts, mining shares, and stick to the physical. I would hate for you to be right on silver and wrong on the form of silver. We are entering a generational shift out of paper assets into real tangible assets. As I have stated many times in the past, the dollar is mathematically going to collapse and it is the very basis for our entire world economy. The dollar collapse will be the single largest event in human history and will dramatically touch every human being on earth and will leave a scar on generations to come. Yes, it's going to be that big. When the mathematically inevitable collapse happens, all paper assets will be destroyed. This goes for dollars, yen, euro, CDs, munis, T-bills, money markets, insurance policies, pensions, privately owned businesses, structured settlements, social security, dividends, 401ks, IRAs, stocks, options, bonds, and even real estate. Without a functioning currency and the uncertainty it brings, credit grinds to a halt, payments grind to a halt, markets grind to a halt, the world economy grinds to a halt. People panic and this always leads to war. This naturally leads to investors finding value in real tangible assets like commodities. Commodities are real things that we use every day in our life like pork, cotton, corn, oil, and steel. The problems with most commodities is storage. I know for a fact that two of the best asset classes to be in, in terms of real inflation adjusted returns, will be food and fuel. They are most essential to humanity and they are hardest to live without. I strongly recommend people stocking up on preparations before they buy silver. You will need at least a three month supply of food per person as a buffer for the massive global social upheaval we are going to go through with the collapse of the dollar. The problem with investing in most food and fuel is storage issues. Most food and fuel deteriorates and becomes worthless. Also, storage can be prohibitive because we're talking about some big dollars. I don't know about you, but I certainly don't have a grain silo or storage tanks. In extreme conditions, those that invest in food and fuel put their life at risk. People's violent response to moneyed interest that tried to speculate with people's food during times of crisis is something to consider. In 1565, one of Antwerp's richest men, Pauls van Dael, bought large amount of grain in hopes of driving up prices. When starving people found out about the stash, they rioted all over the city. Speculators and the rich were targeted with violence for their arrogance and greed. Unless you're a farmer or an oil baron, this usually rules out many commodities for the average investor. This brings us to metals because they don't deteriorate. For most metals, storage is a big issue. $8,000 will buy you a ton of copper, but just over 4 ounces of gold. This is why precious metals are sought after, because of their rarity and their ability to store so much wealth in a small space. One of the biggest reasons why people invest in precious metals is that there's no counterparty risk. Its value is derived from its intrinsic value of rarity and potential uses. With precious metals, you do not have to worry about someone paying a dividend or earnings in a depression or, or a currency collapse. In fact, the worse that things get in the economy, the more people will escape to precious metals and drive up its price. Once you see that precious metals are the place to be, you will need to choose between the four precious metals, gold, silver, platinum, and palladium. 
Platinum and Palladium have rarity and industrial use going for them, but they've never been used as money in history. With a currency collapse, I want something that will have the most demand to drive up the price the most. I want my metal to have industrial, investment, and monetary demand. This leaves us with gold and silver as the only two rational choices for investment in the face of a mathematically inevitable worldwide currency collapse. So let's go through some of the competitive advantages of silver over gold. Number one. Silver is the second most versatile commodity, second only to oil. With its growing technological and medical uses, its demand will be vital to any recovery we will see. Silver's unique antimicrobial, reflective, and conductive qualities make it a vital element in many high-ticket projects. Since it is so vital and used in such small quantities, its price is inelastic. If silver goes to $1,000 an ounce, Apple Computer still needs a tenth of an ounce to make their $2,000 computer work at its highest quality. They will simply raise the price $100 to make up the difference. Number two, silver is cheap enough for the common man to buy. It's not really conceivable that the average American, much less most of the people in the world, will have enough money to buy even one ounce of gold. People are struggling to make mortgage payments, much less buy an ounce of gold. With silver at $33 an ounce, a husband can buy a couple coins without even consulting his wife. Meanwhile, if he blew $1,700 on an ounce of gold, he might have some explaining to do. And since silver is relatively cheap, the higher the price of gold goes, the more demand will naturally flow into silver. Number three, gold is treasured, silver is thrown away. Since the dawn of man, gold has been treasured. In more recent times, silver has been trashed as an industrial commodity and not valued as a precious metal. With the rise of technology, silver has literally been thrown away in such small quantities that it may never be recovered. In fact, the United States Geological Survey said that if current trends continue, silver will be the first element to become extinct on the periodic table. Number four, there are no large stockpiles of silver left. Over the past decades, we have been consuming more silver every year than we mine. This is only possible because we have used up all of humanity's previously mined silver. In 1950, it was estimated that there was 10 billion ounces of major stockpiles of silver. Today, there are relatively none left. So even though that gold is 10 times more rare than silver when mined out of the earth, the fact that gold has been treasured and silver it has been trashed makes the silver that is left much more rare than the 10 to 1 ratio that it naturally occurs in. The gold to silver ratio is 1 to 50. It takes approximately 50 ounces of silver to buy one ounce of gold. If throughout all of history, for every one ounce of gold that has been mined, 10 ounces of silver have come out of the ground, how much longer can we expect to have a 1 to 50 ratio? If silver has been trashed for decades and gold has been treasured, how much longer can we have a 1 to 50 gold to silver ratio? If the amount of dollars invested in gold and silver at Sprott Asset Management, Gold Money, and the U.S. Mint is 1 to 1, how much longer can we have a 1 to 50 gold to silver ratio? At some point, the market's going to recognize the incredible opportunity. And when it does, it will most likely overshoot and make silver actually more valuable than gold. So, if you really want to buy gold, buy silver. You can buy 50 ounces of silver right now. And if the ratio falls to a 1 to 1 ratio, you can trade those 50 ounces of silver for 50 ounces of gold. Number 6. Silver has the largest and most persistent short position of any commodity ever. The only reason why a 1 to 50 gold to silver ratio exists is because the bankers sell paper silver into markets to suppress the price of silver to give strength to the dollar and the quadrillion dollar paper empire that they rule. In May of 2011, when they crashed the silver market, they sold something like 8 billion ounces of paper silver into a market in 5 days. There is only 1 billion ounces of silver mined every year globally. This massive naked short position will unwind the day that they cannot deliver the silver that they promised. Number seven, the bankers are running out of silver and time. The COMEX registered silver inventory now stands at 35 million ounces. A little over a billion dollars would completely empty the largest stockpile of silver. To put that number into perspective, the United States government increased our federal debt by $120 billion. That $1 billion of registered COMEX silver would represent 12 minutes of increased federal deficit spending. If you see that quadrillions in paper assets are going to fail, and that most commodities are not suitable for investment, and how small the silver market is, it does not take a very large stretch of the imagination to think what will happen when people try to get into this market. Since the gold market is so large, I think that we will see central banks and major institutions buying gold. 
but if they dumped a billion into silver, they would explode the market. A billion into the gold market would hardly make a ripple. Number nine, the majority of gold owners are bankers. If you look at the largest stockpiles of gold in the world, most of the owners are central banks of the world. The very guys that are destroying the paper markets are the largest owners of gold. There is not one central bank that I know of that even owns an ounce of silver. Since silver has been used more times as money throughout history than gold has, logic would dictate that at some point central banks are going to want to buy silver and there's so few of it left. Number 10. Gold bullion is more reported than silver bullion. Gold is reported on twice as much in the media as silver. I would bet that if you only looked at major media, gold is probably reported a hundred times more than silver, since silver is almost completely ignored. The only time I have ever seen silver reported is when we get a major smackdown in price and the mainstream propaganda strike fear in their consumer slaves on how scary the silver market is. When the dollar collapses, people will be clamoring to find answers, and they will naturally find silver. As the awareness of silver grows, so will its popularity. I believe at some point, silver will be more popular than Justin Bieber. No!